Hello and welcome to this Max QDA video tutorial. In this tutorial, I will provide a brief overview of all the visual tools in Max QDA, except Max Maps, which is so comprehensive that it gets its own tutorial. Let's start with the visual representation of a single document. In our example, it's an interview that has already been coded. Especially when interviews are quite long, it's often not easy to visually imagine the order, breadth, or length of individual thematic sections. With the document portrait, you can see it all at a glance. To open the portrait, right-click on the document, select Document Portrait, and all the coded areas of the interview will be scaled to a uniform size and evenly distributed in an adjustable window according to their order within the document. This way you can see the structure of the interview in one visual breakdown. Codes of the same color are always grouped together in the document portrait, and the default setting includes only coded areas, but you can also let the proportion of non-coded text be represented by white areas. By clicking on one of the squares, you can jump directly to the corresponding location in the document. Instead of just visualizing the structure of the document, you can also compare the frequencies of codes. And if you want to compare two or more documents, the sort by colors function can help. Just as with all other visual tools, you can export the displayed visualization via these buttons, as an image or in several other formats. The document portrait is especially suited to documents that don't contain many duplicate coded segments, since these are necessarily arranged in sequential order in the document portrait. If you would like to visualize the simultaneous occurrence of several codes in a single document, the code line is your best option. Here you can see the paragraph numbers of the selected document as column headers, and beneath them, you can see the code system with the occurrence of each respective code in the paragraphs. The length of the code stripes can either be visualized according to the number of characters, as we see it here, or whether a code occurs at all in a paragraph. Additionally, you can limit the display of the document to your screen width and thereby summarize it within these parameters. Beyond comparing the codes in individual documents, you can also compare codes across multiple documents using the document comparison chart. Here you can see which codes have been assigned within individual paragraphs of any number of documents. A very popular tool for analyzing the occurrence of codes in multiple documents is the Code Matrix browser. You can create the Code Matrix browser for individual documents, document groups, or sets, or for different participants of a focus group. Varying sums of coded segments are represented by a standardized set of squares in corresponding sizes. If necessary, you can also see the exact numbers. A significant advantage of the squares is not only the increased clarity, but also the fact that you can visualize the code frequencies with respect to different contexts. In the standard view we're looking at now, the smallest number in the entire matrix has been assigned the smallest square. You can also calculate the square sizes only with reference to each individual column. Then you can quickly see which code has the highest frequency in a document. Or if we convert to row calculation, we see for each respective code in which document it occurs the most. This visual tool is interactive too. By clicking on a square, the corresponding segments will appear behind it in the Retrieved Segments window. Clicking on this button right here will open the Interactive Quote Matrix. It allows you to see all those segments which the Code Matrix browser refers to in an interactive table. Let's now turn to the Code Relations browser. It's similar to the Code Matrix browser, except that it doesn't display the occurrence of codes in documents, but rather the co-occurrence of codes, or code overlaps. 
Everything else basically works in the same way as in the code matrix browser. So you can once again click on a square to return to the data in which these two codes overlap or occur near one another. Last but not least, the word cloud, which is available for any selection of your data. That is for individual documents, document sets, or for the contents of your retrieved segments window. The word cloud displays which terms are found most frequently in the selected data material. You can use the stop list to exclude any irrelevant words. And if you're working with Max QDA Plus or Max QDA Analytics Pro, you can switch directly to the word frequencies viewer for the entire document. And that was a brief overview of Max QDA's visual tools. We hope you have fun visualizing your data.